Good day fellow investors, Netflix stock analysis. Bill Ackman has recently announced in his letter that he bought a big stake in Netflix, more than a billion invested, thus Netflix is according to him the best stock to buy today. And this is typically Bill Ackman, he says that Netflix's pipeline of content could allow it to fend off competition, thus keep its moat and boost margins, boost earnings, boost cash flows and therefore increase in stock stock prices. And he usually does that, he buys something then sells when it doubles or triples. So if it is a typical Bill Ackman stock, you can expect it to double or triple. Because as he says, many of our best investments have emerged when other investors whose time horizons are short term, we'll give an example of that, discard great companies at prices that look extraordinarily attractive when one has a long-term horizon. A few years for Bill Ackman, usually two to three X for the stock, usually. We're gonna do a valuation, explain the business, discuss the stock price, see how Netflix is, let's say, fairly priced, how it is extraordinarily cheap, what Bill Ackman provides, and then also why it is uncertain and risky and why the market doesn't like it. Let's start with our analysis, but before, if you enjoy this analysis, I'm going to do also the top 10 SAP 500 positions as earnings come in over the next few weeks. So please support the channel, smash that like button, and if you haven't, consider subscribing. Thanks for your support. So let's start with the stock price. So this is earnings came in and projections of future growth and the stock is down 23 percent especially as all the tech sector is negative so when such a surprise comes to earnings it hits the stock even more the stock is actually down 44 percent over the last few months and if we look at long term it is now where it was trading four years ago so for a growth stock this is a big big decline and therefore this might be the time when usually it happens for all growth stocks at some point in time growth stocks remain still growth stocks but not at the fast rate of the past and reach cash flows that turn them into a value proposition which is why Bill Ackman likely bought. The number to remember here is 170 billion which is the market capitalization which is the number I will use for my valuation and comparisons. Let's start with business analysis and uh, Bill Ackman lays it all out of the key points in his letter and it is of course streaming industry and benefits from the decline in linear TV driven by its superior customer experience. I am a customer, I am subscribed to Netflix, so it is better than television. I don't watch television, I haven't watched it for a decade likely. So we choose what we want to pick and look at Netflix and it's unlikely that we will unsubscribe. I don't watch it much, but when I want to relax or something, Seinfeld is the latest I have watched. I really enjoy. And Ekman says subscription-based highly recurring revenues which have enormous future growth potential. That is the key. Okay, best in class management, so they know how to pivot, they know how to do things well. Economies of scale, superb quality, industry leading content, which you want to have when you invest. You want to have the leader pricing power. So they are continuously increasing prices and it doesn't really hit churn that much. And the key, of course, substantial margin expansion with the opportunity for continued improvement due to economies of scale, which we'll discuss in the valuation and growing global subscriber base. That should all lead to improving free cash flow profile that should allow for continued investment in growth as well as the return of cash to shareholders. So let's look at the last earnings. What has happened? Why is Netflix hit? Well, they have added 8.5 million, 8.3 million new net subscribers, but this was just a little bit below estimations. But what really hit them was that the projections for new subscriber growth were lower than ever. So huge investments in content. You see they are really investing in a lot of new content. 
By the way, just to tell you how much I watch Netflix, I watch just Lupin from here, nothing else. So, okay, I don't spend much time on it, that's good. Nevertheless, global breakdown of uh, revenues, so it's well distributed and plenty of room to grow as disposable income grows in these countries. So if you look at long term as Bill Ackman is looking, then it is okay. And now something very important. When you make a business analysis, you also discuss total addressable market. And in the last conference call interview, let's say, they said that it is about 900 million homes and therefore that there is just 25 percent penetration now here just one notification from my consumer part i have one paying account but three homes use my account so uh, my mother-in-law my parents and we so that's free so that also takes away a little bit from this market share but I don't think that Bill Ackman bought for market share. I think he bought for what already is there and the possibility to increase services prices and who knows what over time. Because keep in mind, Bill Ackman is an activist investor. He will, if the stake gets big enough for him in Netflix, he will try to help the management like he did with another typical Bill Ackman <laughs> intervention where he, okay, as I saw, told you, five. this is five times, but usually two, three, four, five times returns, three times returns. This is typical Bill Ackman investing. Great companies that decline for whatever reason, he sees value and he gets in big. So let's do some financing analysis. And this is the key that there is certainly uncertainty with Netflix, but if Bill Ackman can help, then the uncertainty will get lower in the future and the stock price will go higher. If we look at finances, this is the main issue. So Netflix has spent 19 billion on content and we see here that the free cash flows are actually negative. So for now, they are spending a lot of content, but that spending isn't increasing the number of subscribers as it has been the case in the past. So that is what the market doesn't really like. Plus the margins have gone down a little bit, but two percentage points, 200 basis points here are because of Forex, so the US dollar strengthened compared to all the other currencies that we have seen in the global breakdown. Thus, in US dollars, revenues are lower, but not in local currency. So if the thing reverts with the dollar, if the dollar weakens, then it will be better for Netflix from this accounting perspective. Let's hope the dollar strengthens because I also am selling everything in US dollars. So the stronger the dollar, the more local currency money I make. That's how it goes. In India, they have lowered prices, but they say that's a specific market. Over time, they will find a balance. Now let's discuss the most important thing here. And this is additions to content assets 17.7 billion that has been increasing that has been increased 50 percent the spending into content but as you can see as the spending content increases the number of new subscribers doesn't really increase and it's actually a deceleration in growth from the base and now the question is is 17 billion spending for content what they spent this year enough or will they have to keep increasing it to keep customers satisfied and that's the game as bill ackman said free cash flows that will be returned to shareholders is the game changer is the clear catalyst for this investment and i will make a valuation and i'll go for five six fifteen percent growth ahead and then try to estimate what will be the divergence between let's say cash flows and spending that will allow for free cash flows that will allow for likely buybacks which is netflix's style and now the thing is that there is a lot of uncertainty with netflix the stock has crashed because markets hate uncertainty. When there is something uncertain, it doesn't mean it's risky. The business is still there. The customers are not fleeing. Everything is working like it 
worked before, but the market is suddenly uncertain because the stock isn't going up and when a stock doesn't go up, it goes down. And that's like the rationality. And Bill Ackman did what Benjamin Graham says, to be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. So be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Very easy, no? But let's discuss the uncertainty. We see that Jeffries says content alone isn't cutting it for TV streamer. And if you look at their comments, they downgraded it from hold to buy, saying there is too much uncertainty in the near term. That's the focus of analysts, the near term. And that's also the biggest opportunity we as investors have. If we Look forward, he says that Netflix subscribers are going nowhere and if slower subscriber growth is the new normal, we would need to see a change in content and capital allocation with new revenue streams. And this is it. Now the stock is cheap because analysts and markets wait for that to happen, to see new revenue streams, to see new growth or higher cash flows. They are not buying now before it happens. When it happens, it's too late. And then for valuation, we see growth in revenues, despite not that big growth in new paying members, but it leads, okay, net income. But the key is how much are they going to spend for content forward and how much of it will be free cash flows. If you go to my free downloadable analysis stock template, you can see what I do here for free. The premium one is on my research platform and I have added Netflix there. So I have estimated 5.5 billion in free cash flow in 2020. So let's say that Netflix's spending on content stays stable, maybe not in 2020, maybe in 2023. they manage to grow revenues and allow for free cash flows. Maybe it will be zero, zero for two years and then 10 billion in year three. That's always uncertain, but we can try to estimate what will be the long term in a trend just to give us as a sense of valuation. If Netflix grows 10% from the base of 5 billion that I have taken now and we give it a 10% discount rate, they spend that money, let's say in buybacks, then the intrinsic value is $140 billion. So close to the market capitalization, 140, then I would expect a return of around 9%, 8.5%. However, if we see Bill Ackman's strategy going forward, let's say 15% growth per year over the next 10 years, discount rate I have to put here, 10% so that that's the expected minimum return for us on investors on this channel, then the present value is 267 billion. Thus, Netflix will likely lead also to 15% returns per year. Plus, as the market gets usually exuberant, if the stock doubles in three years, you are even higher than 15% per year. Of course, in this video, you can check everything explained related to this table if you want to know more. And then risky scenario, let's say they grow just 6% in free cash flows, the market doesn't like it that much, gives it terminal multiple of 15, then there is risk for a decline of 50% on these valuations. So you have to see how this strategy, how this business fits your portfolio. Bill Ackman is usually right four out of five times. If he's wrong, he will sell it and just speak about something else. It has been very profitable for him what he's doing. So you have to see how Netflix fits your portfolio because your portfolio as a whole is what matters, not just one investment. And then of course, price increases are likely to be ahead as they did just in the US. And if there are cash flows, this is from the conference call, uh, then we will see likely buybacks that should help the stock price. And that's also what Bill Ackman is focusing on. So for a strategy, investment strategy, I think if you buy Netflix now, and if you're ready, if there is more bad news over the year until 
Bill Ackman's idea and catalyst get traction, if you're ready to dollar cost average in it, I think it's hard to lose money because of the large strong subscriber base that is pretty loyal to Netflix, despite the competition. Because if there is competition, you will likely buy that too. That was also discussed in the conference call. And that's something that gives it a strong moat, a strong brand to Netflix is a verb already like Google. So it's likely going to be there five, 10 years from now growing, even by slower growth, it will likely double. That could allow for 10, 20 billion in free cash flows. And that's what makes it a value investing according to Bill Ackman. I haven't purchased it. I will just put it here on my table and then watch it over time. You never know when it gets cheaper, even cheaper compared to other options and then see whether I'm interested to buy something that Actually, I am a customer there. If you enjoyed this analysis, smash that like button. Check what I do if you're interested in more stock analysis research, my portfolio. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.